Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. Firstly, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Hope you all had a great holiday period. And uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And we are finally back today with some more VGC 2021 content. Playing today, as you can see on your screen, a G-Max, a Charizard team. And uh, we've got lots of fun things going on in this team. So we'll get into that in a minute. But just before we do, I just need to say a big thank you to everyone, not only for all of the kind comments and support throughout the players cup uh two that i was commentating in and it was a great experience with lou adam and rosemary but also for all the, the kind support and well wishes that i got as the players cup two was actually finishing the finals on the saturday sunday uh, i got rushed into hospital and uh, had an emergency operation to have my appendix out and ever since then so the last four weeks i've like literally been just resting up not done anything and um it's a bit weird coming back today this is the first week i'm kind of up doing things normal stuff uh so hopefully getting into this week next week we'll be back into the swing of stuff and content will be coming back onto the channel obviously we've got players cup three starting this weekend so i will be playing in the qualifiers if i can capture any content from that i will definitely throw it up next week but today obviously i wanted to kick off with something a little bit more fun something that i think is very good that is underlooked and has a lot of potential in the format and that is why i'm playing the the charizard i feel like it's a good pokemon um it's got a good base speed it has a tough time against a lot of popular stuff obviously uh thunderous theory and nine legal there's a bunch of things that give it a hard time but you can support against a lot of those regieleki as well of course um but yes i've got measures in the team and as i say we'll get into it as we go through the episode there will be a poker pace there's always down in the description and we'll throw up the rental at the end of the episode so without further ado friends let's jump into our first match of today so up first we have lewis and they're playing a team of tyranitar tapu finny cartana landris therian rotom heat and dragapult what are we looking at uh, speed control methods for my opponent they got plenty of things that can go max airstream the dragapult landris cartana um and then you've got the kind of the solid tapu finny sitting in there making up a nice fire water grass call with the rotom heat and the cortana um i think charizard does well here uh, in all honesty we have to be a bit careful against the the rotom heat and the tyranitar um but otherwise it doesn't do too bad um i think though we'll probably keep charizard if we do bring it for maybe a little bit later i think it might be nice to bring something like land like i think sableye as a lead is going to be very good um we'll bring landorus i think we bring reggie steel and i think we bring charizard if we're going to lock in and not run out of time because that would be the worst coming back after four weeks and the first thing that i would do is time out but thankfully we haven't done that here so i just feel like i've got so much to catch up with i do want to stream at some point this week so i will put it up on youtube we'll do a stream and it'll give me a chance to actually catch up with you all uh, kind of touch base with you where the format is right now what i've got planned coming up for the next few weeks which is a lot of stuff obviously being in bed uh for the majority of the last four weeks i've had a lot of time to kind of think about things plan things and have a lot of ideas going forward and there's a lot of exciting stuff that i've got in the works currently right now which is going to be good so do stay tuned for that it is going to be a lot of fun and uh more fun for you guys than anything else obviously i'm going to find it fun but uh you know, there is that as well. So we've got the Rotom and we've got the Landorus here. I think one of the things that I love about Sableye, like another Pokemon not really looked at at all this this format, is the priority Will-O-Wisp. And Will-O-Wisp such a strong, a, a, such a strong attacking option. You know, we've seen how well like Spectra does like as a support Pokemon with Will-O-Wisp. Um, and Sableye's got that priority there. So it really does come in super useful. Now, we could just Rock Slide here. We are minus one. I mean, what are our options to bring in the back? We've got Registeel and Charizard. Neither are going to be that great. I think we just Rock Slide here. We have got the Assault Vest on Ladderus. We just want to get some damage onto um, the Rotom here. We do land the Will-O-Wisp into the opposing Ladderus, which is going to help us massively. And we do reveal that as well. I would just see you to come out, so that's fine. Probably see a nasty plot, I'd imagine, from the Rotom. But the Rotom is going to be the one thing, like, if we can remove... From my opponent's team then everything else can kind of function pretty well and i'm kind of holding off going for the gigant like a uh, uh, dynamax in here because i kind of would like charizard to be a uh, dynamax or gigantamax user in this match but we've got to remove the threats first we've got to remove the rotom and kind of nullified what the landers can do with the will-o-wisp support there from sableye and we do some decent damage to it 
And we get the flinch. There we go. There we go. Starting off like we mean to go on. Um, now, Landorus is a little bit threatened now by the type of Vinny, of course, coming in. It can go for Calm Mind. Um, and we're not really posing too much of a threat to the Rotom. Now, this is where we may be able to kind of reposition a little bit. I don't really want to bring Registeel onto the field just yet. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The Charizard... We're just not doing... The thing is, we're not doing the damage that we need to. Um, we could double up into the Rotom and just go for that and a Rock Slide. But it's likely that we see... Maybe... Uh, let's go for a U-turn into the Tapu Fini. It's likely that we see maybe the Rotom switch out. It just goes for a Protect. Okay, so... I kind of want to just get Landorus out of harm's way here. We might see... Um, I think it's safe for us to honestly bring Charizard in. Just we've not really got a way to hit the, the Rotom. Although, G-Max Wildfire from this range would probably be enough to get the Rotom. I think we bring it in. I think we bring it in. Because like what's a Muddy Water going to do now? They're probably going to calm mind if anything, I think. Got to worry about the Tyrann... Oh, just a Moonblast. They're going for the Sableye. So we've got the Roselli Berry there to kind of help against this sort of thing. Which it definitely does. Um, it's just if we had help in hand now on the uh, on the Sableye, that would be that would be huge for us. But we don't. Um, I think we got G-Max Wildfire into the Rotom. Because it could be enough. We either do that or go Max Airstream into this Happy Finny. Like I say, I want to get rid of the Rotom. I think once we get rid of the Rotom, we're kind of alright. So, let's go for this. Double up into the Rotom. It protected last turn. So, I think we've got a kind of a free shot into that slot. Whatever happens. It may Max. It may Max. We may see that. I don't know. I feel like my opponent's going to kind of hold off a little bit on Maxing. Um, and I'm surprised they didn't go for a Calm Mind there. It was kind of a nice opportunity with Tapu Fini. It would have put us in, in, under a lot more pressure this turn, I think. Potentially them maxing themselves um, and going for the Vortex. But we are going to see. Is this, this looks like the Rotom. Which is not the best option for us, for sure. Uh, yeah, little on Rotom. <laughs> okay. Well, can we take an attack from it? it? Has a nasty plot boost, so... We see the, the, the wildfire is not going to give us any residual damage against the Rotom, but we do have the solar power boost, we do have the sun behind us, we do have the life orb. I mean, you know, that is a nice fat amount to something that resists it, you know. So it's just about whether or not we can take the attack from... Um, we will lose Sableye here, unfortunately, but it does give us the option to bring in uh, Landorus this next turn, which is great because that Rotom's now going to be in range for us to pick up the knockout there. So as long as we can take this attack... I'm hoping we can. Yep. It's not ideal because the solar power is going to kind of wear us down a little bit, a little by little. But we can probably do enough now to get rid of the Rotom uh, where we can set up a win con for Celesteela. Uh, Registeel. Registeel. Celesteela. <laughs> what am I talking about? Okay, so Lander is coming in. Like I say, we've got a nice way to pick up the knockout onto Rotom now. And you've got to imagine that my opponent, they're like in an awkward position. So, uh, they're probably going to switch out Tapu Fini into Landorus maybe. Um, but we've got the, the, the Wildfire kind of gone. We've got the Rock Slide here. Uh, I think we just, we just Airstream now. It's pretty safe going into that slot uh, against the Finny at least. Should pick up the knockout with a Solar Power Boost. And I think we... Yeah, okay, we're going to see a max guard. I think they're going to try and at least get their landers onto the field the next turn. But I don't know if it's really going to help them too much. And with the speed boost, that helps us out massively. And we're not like looking at something like Regieleki in the back, which is like a, such a relief, you know. Um, that's when you're going to need something like um, Sableye next to the, the Charizard, so you've got the Quash there to really help you out. And yeah, Charizard going to go down, unfortunately, the next turn to the Recoil from the Life Orb. And if not that, it would be the Solar Power. So the Lander is coming in, which is fine. Again, it is burned, so it's not really posing too much of a threat. And I still think that our Landorus is going to be able to 
pick up the knockout with a rock slide onto the rotom. The only thing here is you think about the risk reward factor here. Rock slide can miss, right? So do we just attack into Rotom? Do we just attack into Rotom uh, with Charizard and then allow Landorus to go for something like a U-turn here into the opposing Landorus? We go... Yeah, we just go Wildfire, I think, just to make sure. Whatever comes in is going to get blown up then uh, if the Rotom does switch out. But it's not going to, we're not going to see it. I just worry there that the Rock Slide misses or misses the knockout on minus one. Then the Rotom takes down Alandarus, the Max Flare. Because they don't worry about Charizard in this situation. No way. And then we're in a lot of heat, hot water because the Rotom's then still causing a big amount of pressure against our Registeel. Charizard's gone, and I don't think we can win this match. So I think we need to guarantee taking out um, the, the Rotom there rather than the Landorus. That is going to be potentially on minus one when we bring uh, Landorus back onto the field. Um, and it's burnt as well. So I don't think we have too much to worry about. There's a rock slide here. And we have no no worries either bringing in Registeel here. Because we had two flying types out on the field. There's no way that Landorus is, is locking into Earthquake in that position. We've still got the Wildfire kind of kicking off. So we're in a decent spot. And it'll be interesting to see what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Because they've got one left. Oh, it's a Tapu Fini, isn't it? It's a Tapu Fini, I'm pretty sure. Is it? It's Tapu Fini, I'm sure. We haven't taken Fini down yet. I'm pretty sure it switched out. Pretty sure. No, we're not really worried too much about... Oh no, it's Tyranitar, okay. Did we get rid of the Fini? I'm like losing my mind. I'm losing my mind here. Have they still got the Tapu Fini? I need to see. Let's see these Pokeballs. Come on, where are they? Okay, so we lose the Sun. I'm surprised the Titar didn't come in sooner, honestly. Um... Would have made it a lot harder. No. So we must have taken the Finny down at some point. <laughs> okay. We airstreamed it, I think. Okay. Like I said, I'm losing my mind. Now the T-Tar coming in, that's super fine. Because we can just body press it. And we can just rock slide as well. We don't really need to worry about the T-Tar at all. It's going to go down to a body press. And then we can just flash cannon the, t the, the Landorus uh, with everything. And man, I've just got to say now, I love Registeel so much. I'm so happy. It's one of those Pokemon that is... Kind of made an appearance in the format and it's doing a lot of really good work the only thing that i would like i'll probably repeat this in in, in later videos but the one thing that i do worry about slightly is with reggie steel is because it's doing such a good job that it'll probably promote more use of things like ferrothorn that can one-on-one 100 -on -one beat it if you can keep up with the um there's the lash out coming out double damage not so much though and we do flinch which is not ideal but the wildfire doing it doing its work like it does and i think we're going to be all right we just need to be flinched like not one time um but yeah i think ferrothorn could be something that comes back in uh to popularity i think because it has such a good matchup against stuff like um glastria as well um and it just performs so well in trick room and again it's a bit like what we've done here in a kind of a roundabout way where we're creating a win condition by getting rid of the Rotom Heat, which was the one thing that really threatened Registeel can come in at the end of the match and kind of clean up. So we do land the Rock Slide into Landorus. They miss our Registeel, which is nice because we don't have to con like worry about flinch flinches here. Uh, another Lash Out coming up from the Tyranitar. Um, not going to really be enough to pick up the knockout onto our, our Landorus, and a Body Press should be enough to close this first one up, which is... Nice, a nice way for us to kick off with today, and we get to see pretty much all of the really uh, big Pokemon that we've got on the team. I mean, we've still got to feature Alola Ninetales, which I'm hoping that we can feature in our next match. So, without further ado, friends, good game to Lewis, and we'll jump straight into game two. Our next opponent, we have got Gabraz. They're running a team of the G-Max Colossal, uh, Zumarill, Rillaboom, Incineroar, Reggie Alecki, and Galarian Zapdos. So I've been hearing good things about Galarian Zapdos as well, so I'm interested to see what it does in this match here. Uh, obviously, it gets access to a bunch of really strong attacks and good support options as well. The one thing that we've got to really highlight here is that the Azumarill colossal combination obviously with the aqua jet there can um, really do some work against us um if they're able to proc the steam engine on the colossal which which isn't ideal um 
I do think that Sableye Charizard is a really good lead here for us. Um, and we'll get into that as we get into the match. So I do think that can work pretty well against most things that my opponent's going to bring. So we just need to make the right calls, I think. What we're going to have in the back, because I think we're going to need Rillaboom. It'll help us against stuff like Regieleki, uh, the Azumarill for sure. If we can get damage onto the Colossal as well, that's going to help us out. No trouble at all. And I think Landorus is going to be our last one. It's a bit unfortunate that we're not featuring the Ninetales today, but we really need the right conditions for bringing it, I think. It's one of those Pokemon where I think Charizard G-Max doesn't necessarily need the sun to operate as just a humongous powerhouse that we know it is. But obviously things like um, Thunderous, things like Landorus cause Charizard all sorts of problems. Things like Zapdos um, and excluding Thunderous from that pool that I've just mentioned. Ninetales does add speed and it can support with Aurora Veil which is extremely useful and it can hit most things with its, its super effective Ice Stabs. It also outspeeds stuff like Urshifu so you can, you can really deal with that without having too many worries as well which is a nice option. Um, and you've got the Icy Wind support there which is also just something that really helps out speed control. It's always something that's really useful. Okay well we got Rillaboom and we got Incineroar coming out for my opponent. I mean the Rillabooms in a, a horrible position right now. I mean, what's my opponent going to bring in to kind of resist that? Maybe something like Regieleki. Maybe something like Zapdos. Um, potentially Colossal, I guess. But I think the thing is, we just go for the Airstream into the Rillaboom. Um, I probably don't want to set Sun here, to be honest. There's not really too much I can do to... I mean, the other option is Burn the Rillaboom. But I risk... Colossal coming in and burning that and activating Steam Engine that way, which wouldn't be ideal. And I don't want to set the Sun because it'll give Incineroar more chance of picking up the Knockout onto Sableye here. And I, I don't think we need the Sun to get the Rillaboom unless they G-Max themselves. And then we would have. But let's see. It's not the lead I kind of expected. Especially when we've got a Sableye in our team because, you know, you're leading double fake out. You've not really got many options. I mean, they probably think that we're not going to lead the Charizard uh, against them because of the Colossal, but it's not the case. So we do see... Okay, we're going to lose Sableye, which is not ideal. But I mean, it's still not the worst because really for my opponent to... Unless we see a parting shot here and then we get to keep... Sableye, so all things are rosy. Uh, but they need to get Colossal in the field with the Azumarill uh, to support it, because if they don't have that board position, then things get very difficult for them. Look at the foul play. We are faster than the Incineroar. We get a little bit of damage. That's all we want to do here. That's a, the game of the game. And a taunt. <gasps> no! That's the worst thing that we could have seen. But again, it's not the worst thing in the world, because we really aren't going to see this next turn, Colossal and Azumarill next to each other. So that's why we're not worrying too much. If Colossal comes in, we've still got Scorching Sands. We need to obviously adjust our board position, uh, and it's Regieleki. This is the other bad thing, of course. Because <laughs> uh, if it's Specs, it can it can 100% pick up the knockout onto, onto Charizard. So we're going to have to reposition our board here, 100%. Uh, I need to bring in Landorus. Um... We have to do it. We have to do it. Yeah. And with the grassy terrain being up now, it makes it more difficult for Landorus to deal with things like Regieleki and Incineroar with Earthquake. We'll see what my opponent goes for here. We, we do get the max guard off. I don't think we can risk losing Charizard. It just feels so careless to just not protect here. And there's a flare that's coming out into Landorus. Okay, well, it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Um, okay, I think we might have to... The other option there would have been bringing Rillaboom, but that, that Flare Blitz is what I worry about. Because if we take the Flare Blitz there, we lose Rillaboom. We don't have access to Fake Out support, which we kind of need against the Regieleki. Um... Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll bring in Rillaboom for Charizard. We're going to have to sacrifice our G-Max here. We're going to have to play around. Like, I don't want to be in this position. 
Um, but unfortunately that is the position we are in right now. I can't really go for an earthquake, so I think we're probably better off going for a rock slide. We may get a cheeky flinch onto the incineral, and we're just going to get decent damage onto the Regieleki. And they're going to go for the Thunderbolt or whatever it was they went for that last turn. I didn't. I missed it. I completely missed what it was. I don't think it was Electro Web. But I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be Specs. Yeah, it's Thunderbolt. We'll soon find out from this damage. Yeah. Yeah, that's Specs. 100%. Now, Rock Slide here. That Incineroar is going to be very close to going down this next turn. The Regieleki is going to be in, unless they've targeted that slot. Okay, they haven't. That's good. Um, okay, so we're in. Yeah, now Rock Slide definitely in range. Mm, maybe not with the Grassy uh, terrain recovery there. Grassy Glide is going to pick up the knockout onto the Regieleki here, which is ideal. I don't think an Earthquake is going to be enough to get Incineroar. Um... But do they keep Regieleki? The thing is, if Regieleki goes down, a single target rock slide will be enough to get the Incineroar. So we just got to hope that they stay in. Okay. Not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. Because it protected. But again, you've always got a, a chance of a flinch if you are thrown rock slides out like this and it is actually enough to pick up the knockout which is huge for us because um the grassy terrain still sticking around i think one more one more one more turn i think one more turn so we've got the chance to grassy glide pick up the knockout on regieleki which is good and then we've got probably the colossal as the last pokemon to deal with zapdos okay which is fine which is super fine. So we just Grassy Glide into Regieleki. We go for a fly with... Yeah, because the thing is, like, switching Landorus out at this point, it, it makes no sense. That if we don't want to proc the Defiant ability on the Zapdos. So we want to just try and get a fly into it if we can. Um, and go from there. But they still got their Dynamax kind of ability. <sighs> they can utilize. So the match is not over by any means. What are they maxing? Is it going to be that DOS? It is. Okay. <sighs> Just got to hope that the, the grassy glide's enough. It should be enough to get the Regieleki. It should be enough. And then we fly with Landorus. Hopefully they target the Rillaboom. They go for the double protect. It does fail, unfortunately, for my opponent. I think that's pretty much what all they could kind of hope for there. Yeah, we did pick up the knockout. Okay, and we're not going to see the Colossal, which is, which is better. Better for us, for sure. Okay, now they do attack into the Landorus, which is probably the better decision, in all honesty, um, because then, then they're contending with having to um, the fly and things like that, which isn't which isn't ideal. Um, but we do have Sableye to come in. We do have cheeky old Sableye to come in, and we do have Will-O-Wisp that we can utilize. Come on, let's do this. And then we got Charizard to come in, potentially. And it comes down to speed ties. Well, not now, because they got the airstream. Do we go for Woodhammer? Or Grassy Glide? I think. Has the Grassy. Has the terrain actually left the field yet? Yeah, it has. So we go for Woodhammer. Is it better to switch out to Charizard? No, 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 no. Nah, not now. Not now. I think we would hammer. I think we just go for a will o -Wisp. Hope that we can get a wood hammer off. I mean, we could have quashed here, but it's probably better to get the will o -Wisp off now um, to kind of weaken Zapdos while we've got the opportunity to. I'm just going for another airstream. It's going to be into Rilla. Oh, it's going to be into Sableye. So, Rillaboom gets to live another day, which is ideal. Um, and then we've got to get through one more turn of the Dynamax. How much is this doing? I mean, it's a decent amount, right? It's a decent amount. It is a decent amount. And the burn. So it's going to come down to Charizard Rillaboom here. And Charizard's pretty healthy, to be honest. So... I think we might be alright. I think... Oh, it depends what the Zapdos has got, you know? Um, I'm not really too familiar. It's because I don't really play against too many Zap... Like... Galarian Zapdos, so I'm not really too familiar with their, their, their sets. Like, what's their third attack? They're going to have Protect. 
They've got Airstream. Yeah, where you gone? Into Zard, which is ideal because we get another another wood hammer. They're just ignoring Rillaboom here. Don't care. But Rillaboom is like, ignore me all you want because these wood hammers are going to be the end of you, boy. Yeah, and I mean another wood hammer is going to take down. So now technically we, we we're in a, a complete like a really good winning position you know uh it's hard for my opponent as well because they got to make a 50 50 call there you know they attack into the really boom we waste protecting um but fortunately for us we kind of got the call right and uh, we can just uh slash and go for a wood hammer and whatever my opponent decides i mean the best thing they can probably do is go after the really boom here hope that an air slash misses from our charizard because that's like the best case. But Brave Bird going to be probably enough recall now with the residual burn damage to actually pick up the knockout anyway. Which it is. So yeah, we do take it on default. But very good game to my opponent. Very entertaining. And I think the team's done very well today. We got two wins. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. It was nice to feature. And we'll jump over now and get you guys the rental code. Okay, friends, here it is. Here's the rental code for today's team. If you would like to try out the Zard Sableye, we didn't get to feature the Alolan Ninetales, which is a little sad because I think it's a really good Pokemon in general. That Icy Wind slot as well was originally Hypnosis, but I thought the extra additional speed control would probably be beneficial and a bit more reliable there. But if you want to be a bit more risky and play some sleep in the team, you've got the option there with Hypnosis. I don't think Ninetales really needs Protect, so you can kind of run without it. Obviously, Moonblast is an option there over Dazzling Gleam. I just prefer the spread damage there in case of things like uh, Redirection, Follow Me, Rage Powder, stuff like that. That you see commonly run with things like Urshifu. Uh, then, uh, yeah, that is it. We didn't really get to see much of the Registeel, although it did kind of win out the game for us in that first one today. But uh, I hope if you do try out the team, you do enjoy it. And uh, do, if you if you do try it out, leave a comment down below, let me know. And uh, I just hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been a blast been back finally after all this time and again just a big thank you to you all for all of the amazing support that we had not only for like 2020 which was like one of the toughest years i think like a lot of us will ever experience but just for just being an amazing community i never got to say this over the new year and christmas obviously being uh resting up and things like that and just all the support you give me especially when i was uh, in hospital and back at home resting up so uh, i just want to say i appreciate each and every one of you like i say i've got a lot planned for the next few weeks so do stay tuned we've got some goodies coming and uh, you will not be disappointed like i say i hopefully will be streaming at some point this week i will let you know post in the community section of the channel so do keep an eye on that for when we'll be doing that and with that i will leave you all to enjoy the rest of your day whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world take care of yourselves and i'll catch you all for another one very soon